All right, hi. Um, I just wanted to do another little tutorial. This one's going to be pr pretty kind of cool for you modeling types that want to model. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you how to use these um, nonlinear deformers to model with. And uh, don't freak out at the like crazy terminology or whatever. It's actually pretty simple. But what we're going to do right off the bat is we're going to go create polygon primitives, and we're going to create a plane. But we're going to go in the options box because we need to give it so many divisions. Right now it's just one polygon by one polygon on the subdivisions along width and height. We'll make it like 10 and 10. This is just so we have 10 edges going down, 10 edges going across. It'll bend nicely. Because right, if it was one entire polygon and I tried to like bend this into a U, like a half skateboard ramp, like a half pipe, it wouldn't bend very well, would it? And if there was only one edge and it had been like a V, so with all these edges, we should get a pretty smooth bend. I scaled it up a little just to see what's going on with it. And um, it's going to be a pretty short demo. But... And I want to make sure I'm under the Animation tab. It's weird, I know. You're usually under the Modeling tab, but Animation with your plane selected. Go under Deform. Go under Create Nonlinear. And just select bin. Don't go in the options or anything right now. And you'll see that it created this um, line. Just a neat little line. Now for our purposes, I'm going to click up here and make sure my attribute editor is open. Um, if it isn't, then you can go under modify edit attribute. You can do it that way, but just click up here on this little icon right here and it opens up the attribute editor. And you got these tabs, the bend handle, we don't you know, we want to move the bend. So we're gonna go into the bend handle tab, bend one handle. That's basically like the handle of the bend, how you move it around. And I want to move it so that it lies flat with the plane, and I want it to be perfectly accurate. I can see my rotate ninety over here keeps changing. So that's where I want to set it accurate. I'll set it to 90 degrees in the X. Now it lies perfectly along my plane. And it's in there. Ah! Okay, so I have it selected. That was the bend handle. I'm done moving it. I don't want to mess with the bend handle anymore. Now I'll go to bend 1. That's the actual bend. You'll see low bound, high bound, curvature, all that. For the first one, we want to see what it's doing. We'll do curvature. See? Check it out. Let me give you guys a better view of what's going on here. Wireframe unshaded so you can see the polygons. Obviously, you see it's bending that way. And you can see what the high bound is doing. It's actually just taking the edge of the the end of the bend <laughs> and it's setting its influence like right from the origin it doesn't influence any more on this side or it influences all the way it's like if you only want to curve one part of it you can set that back to one and then low bound is basically the same it's just in the other direction so you can see what this is doing now envelope is basically just how much of it, it impacts like See, if I turn envelope down, it doesn't impact it at all. So that gives you an adjustment on like how, how much of an impact it has on the surface. So let's reset this to 1 and negative 1. Curvature is 0. Actually, to see what's going on, I will curve it the other way. Like that. Now I want to go back to the handle because let's say I want it to... Um, I want it to curve the other way. This is where it gets cool. Ah! Well, we know this is a curve around Z, so I'm going to type in negative 90 right there. In Z, I type negative 90. That basically rotated my bend around like this so that now when we do the bend, We can seal that thing into a cylinder if we wanted. We can make all kinds of cool, you know, shapes. Again, the high bound 
when we go into wireframe, we'll get a better idea of what this thing's doing. See? More effect that fills out. It can go 360 degrees, that bend. See that? And then low bounds, the same. Put an even one in there again. And so you can see how this works. Pretty cool, huh? And obviously by grabbing the handle and rotating the handle, my god, you can get a lot of wacky effects. Basically just play with these settings, man. Okay? And when you don't want the um when you have the shape you like, again, like I've done in past tutorials, and you don't want this bin deformer, like, if I was just like this bin deformer and delete it, look what happens. It goes right back to, it has no effect anymore. And if I move my bin deformer around through the object, jacks it up. So when I'm done and I have a shape that I like and I'm going to work with, I select my geometry, just edit, delete by type, history. And there we go. So as you can see, these um, create create nonlinear deformers. Bend, flare, sign, squash. Play with them and use them because they're going to help you bend geometry in ways that like, how, how hard do you think this would have been for me to try to bend this plane by hand like this, you know? Like right now, this actually would make a pretty decent piece of paper just blowing down the road or something in an animation. But anyway, that's it. That's how to use a nonlinear deformer to tweak.